How did you get into softball when you were growing up? Well, I actually wanted to be a Major League Baseball pitcher. And I was five years old when I started playing catch with my brothers and my dad. But girls were not allowed to play baseball, organized baseball, at that time. So my dad let me be the bat girl. And at night I'd always wonder, why can't I play? Why was I given this gift? You know, and next thing you know, I'm pitching to my big brother right before a Little League baseball game. He wants me to break in his new catcher's mitt. And this coach comes running off the field and says, wow, you got a great arm. How would you like to play on my Little League baseball team? Yes! My prayers were heard and here I'm going to play Little League baseball. And then he said, well, we're going to have to cut your hair really short and give you a boy's name. We're going to call you Bob. <laughs> so isn't it funny I married to Bob? I, that's what I was just thinking. Um, and I tell you. He literally gave you a Bob cut though. He, well, I said, sir, thank you, but no thank you. Oh. If I have to hide who I am, I just don't feel it's right. So I walked over to a really big field, hiding in the outfield playing baseball catch. That was all I knew. And this coach comes up and says, wow, you got a great arm. How would you like to talk to the head coach? You know, and I was like, well, sure. And when I went around at home and came to its third base, out came the coach in the third base dugout, and it was a woman. And it shocked me. You know, and she said, have you ever played softball before? And I was like, no, what's softball? Oh, it's just like baseball, but the ball's a little bigger. Get on third base. Well, I took a few ground balls. She called me over and she said, how would you like to play on my fast pitch softball team? And I said, yes, my prayers are answered. You know, you just felt that God had given you this gift and now you have this opportunity. And then she said, how old are you anyway? And when I told her I was 10, she almost died because the average age was 22. So we went and talked to mom and dad and they said yes. And I became a Union Park Jet, and that picture is right in front that Laura had put here in the Sports Museum of America. And, and it's really neat because that's when softball started for me. Five World Championships, five Pan American Games, two Olympic gold medals, NCAA Player of the Decade for the 80s, Collegiate All-American for years, NCAA Champion, the first NCAA Championships we've ever had at UCLA. We beat Fre Fresno State to win that title. Why do you think it was so hard for, for you growing up, or for women in general? Why? I mean, why? Well, I think it was hard for women just because of society and where it was at. And you see a lot when you look at uh, ethnicities or, you know, race or those different things. And I think what happened is women, even though we're like 50% or 51% of the population, it's kind of like it took a while for the women to be recognized as true athletes because of the society roles that had been there. So I think a lot of women paved the way. And when Title IX came into effect in 1972 in this nation, um, then that, that was 72, right? 72. Um, that gave us a chance for people to think about it more. And that's what I love about the 96 Olympics. They say it was the Olympics of women, sports, yeah. team sports. Why? Ba women's basketball won, women's gymnastics won, women's volleyball won, women's soccer won, women's gym, uh, softball won, and women's soccer. But I looked at that as not just the Title IX opportunities for women in sports to encourage us as girls to continue to play sports, but I looked at 96 as when everyone fell in love with athleticism, no matter what gender. I mean, it was spectacular. I mean, the media, I mean, all of yeah. you. You even covering me now, it's exciting because there's so many girls and boys out there that enjoy sports, no matter what athlete, what you know, race or gender the athlete is. And that's exciting. Well, it should and that's be. why we're I mean, here. That's the way it yeah. should be. And, and it's just, it, it's odd to think in today's day and age that there was a time when women weren't welcome in sports and that you had to overcome that. And it's not like we're thinking 60, 70 years ago. We're talking about you know, 20, 30 years ago where it was very difficult. And so that's what I, I, I just find it fascinating because we don't think of that today. We think, yeah, women play sports, whatever it is. And yeah, Danica exactly. Patrick yeah. And you, you know, goalie Man and Renee or Renault for who played hockey. Uh, you play for the Tampa Bay Lightning and broke through. And you forget about all the hoopla it took to break through for her and what that was like. That's why now they look at Jenny Finch and Lisa Fernandez in softball and think they're the true pioneers, or they all thought I was. But really, there's so many women from Joan right. Joyce and Bertha Tickey and Snooky, Mo Snooky Mulder and Stephanie Tenney and Irene Shea and Sharon Backus and Willie Rose, and I can go on and on, just like you might with baseball. I mean, the Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig's and Mickey Mantle's, softball has that too. But when softball and baseball were dropped from the Olympics, 
In 2005, the International Olympic Committee said that softball and baseball will be dropped from the Olympic Games. I mean, I kind of looked in the mirror and I said, what's going on? You know, softball, we made it now to three Olympics. The fourth is coming up in 2008 here, you know, in Beijing. What happened? So I felt a personal responsibility to say, what can I do to help continue to elevate the sport of fast food softball that's been great to me and so many others? And so I helped to develop the Pro Fast Pitch Extreme Tour. And I thought about this because when baseball was dropped, how many young boys were upset that baseball was dropped from the Olympics? Not very many. Why? What does every young boy want to be when they grow up? Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball player, right? And what does every young girl in softball want to be? An Olympian. An Olympian. And they dropped it. So if I can help to develop a professional level, that would be a huge legacy that I would love to give to the future generations. So what we did, what sports have been developed over the past 40 years that have been successful at the professional level for men and women? Come on, start naming them. Volleyball. Professional You've volleyball. NASCAR. NASCAR's a tour. You've got... Uh, tennis ten tour. Tennis, yep. Beach volleyball tour. Professional bowling tour. Professional bull riding bull tour. Riding. The X Games is a tour. Professional ice skating's a tour. Professional gymnastics is a tour. So why don't we form a professional level that's not a league. Baseball's been around for 100 years. Uh -huh. But a tour. So the pro fast pitch extreme, because the pitcher's in the X position right. instead of baseball overhand, the pro fast pitch extreme tour evolved. And from 2005, 2006, we put it all together and started our tour. Every pro tour stop is an amateur division as well for eight and under, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 and under travel ball and recreation age groups. And our last tour stop, which was only our 14th in history, had over 10,000 people watching the pro games for that weekend. That's pretty amazing. 5,000 Friday night, 5,200 on Saturday night for the pro games. You must be very proud. Well, I'll be proud when we're in this sports museum hall of, you know, hall of fame, hall of honor um, for the United States. And, uh, and I just feel we're around for 10, 15, 20 years. I can be very proud. What are the plans to, to make the league bigger, to make it, uh, to get more exposure for it? The more amateur teams that register for the PFX Tour stop, pfxtour.com, right? When they register, the more teams, the more pro teams we can have. Okay. Right now we have two pro teams. So the more, when we have 100 or more amateur teams registered, we can go to three pro teams. When we get over 150 or more, we can have four pro teams. But also the tour is beautiful because you can have an American division and a national division. So you can have three or four, four pro teams in the American division and in the national division. So one week in a tour stop, let's say here in New York, and then we have another one in, in California at the right. same time. Then we have a central division that evolves. So then you could have four, four, four for 12 pro teams. Do you see what I'm yeah, getting no, at? It's pretty awesome. And it could be an international tour wow. where you have the Asian Pacific tour, the Asian tour, the European tour, and have a true world series where all the pro teams compete against each other from the Japan Pro League, the NPF Pro League, to the Tour Pros, to the Canadian national team or pros, to all the other Olympians that teams that were there wow. and now don't have the opportunity for the Olympics. But I heard in 2009, baseball and softball may be reinstated for 2016. Wow. Well, I hope so. I mean, so I hope great. so. And uh, I mean, that's the league's amazing. Sounds so amazing. what do you think about uh, the professional level? Do you think it's important that young girls can also oh, think about being? Absolutely. When I was a little I mean, girl, there were no real role models in the sports I liked because I liked um, baseball, softball. And so I dreamed of growing up to be Mike Schmidt. And little girls now can dream to be Dot Richardson, they can dream to be Jenny Finch, they can actually dream about being in the Olympics. And that's, I mean, that's and a big difference pro. though, is, is being able to dream about being a professional athlete as opposed to yeah. anything else. So that's why I love what you're doing. Thank you. Because TV is such a media that visual learning it's is so truth. real. When I saw Chris Evert play and Billie Jean King play tennis on TV, one of the first women's sports to be on TV, I went out, I bought a Chris Everett racket. I joined the tennis team. I never played before. But the power of seeing it on TV and just watching what it, the I movements, to be part of it. inspires you. Yeah, absolutely. I watched snowboarding and think maybe I should try it. I was, and then, there you go. <laughs> in the 84 Olympics, I was so inspired by Mary Lou Retton. I was actually 
using the edge of our family pool table as the um, balance beam. Wow. It wasn't a good idea. Well, <laughs> but... And I told you, I mean, I'm not kidding. I, the 80 Olympic hockey team, I, I watched the original Miracle on Ice with Carl Malden over and over and over, and all I wanted to do was be Mike Ruzioni and score that winning goal. Well, my husband, Bob, oh my gosh, huge Yankee fan. Why? Because he went to the Yankee games. Yeah. He saw them on TV. He follows them. Huge Dolphin fan. Why? Dolphin fan. Because in 1972, he saw them go undefeated. It was 72, right? Yep, 72, yeah. Because we got this ball, right? No football. Defense. And so, But he gets to watch them on TV. Yeah. Um, University of Michigan, he loves their football. Why? He watches them on TV. Watches them on TV. It's pretty amazing. So we've got to get the PFX Tour on TV. Yeah. But since we are waiting for that level, we the girls see us live. Right. I mean, they are watching well, us and live. That's huge too. And that is huge. They're and the meeting fact us. That you travel is autographs, playing the game they love, and watching the best in the game play, and going back on the field yeah. to try and be just like them. So. That's amazing. So talk a little bit about the clinics and how you know how much of an impact that has with the girls getting to meet the professionals and their heroes, the girls, yeah. the women that they look up to. Well, my business manager, Tom McCarthy, uh, my agent to business manager. Uh, I, him and I talked about how can we develop this professional tour in the sport of softball. And we started talking about it a lot, and I said, look, Tom, you be the CEO and the president. Let me be the commissioner, and let's do this together. And so he agreed. But one thing we totally agreed on is it's not just important to pay somebody, even though the God-given talents are in this sport, to just play, to pay them just to play. The whole thing is let's find good role models as professional athletes who are able, and I know that's what your show is all about, get good role models and let the young girls look and see where the sport can take them right. and what kind of athletes they want to be, running on and off the field, supportive of teammates, aggressive on the bases and in the field, and just really appreciating the gifts they've been given. So we wanted to make a difference in the young girls' lives in this nation and around the world eventually. So every tour stop is designed with a player's clinic where they learn from the pros, a coach's clinic where they learn from the coaches and the pro players that coach in college, autograph session immediately after the Saturday pro game is a two and a half hour autograph session, and then before and after the pro games, and I love this, is a pro-am skill challenge of either pitching, bunting, or hitting. So what happens during the games, the kids come up and they put their name in a, in a hat or you know box, and I'll pull out a name, and when I announce her name, she runs up and I say, come on, who are you going to pick for your favorite pro? And she'll pick one of the PFX pros, their favorite pro, standing side by side. Can you imagine? No. I mean, come on. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. So the PFX tour is more about, hey, come and watch the pros play. You have that too. It's about interaction with amateurs and pros together. Which breeds the next generation of professional athletes. Exactly. That's exactly. Awesome.